Now, a local airline industry expert says there are stark safety differences on U.S. commercial airlines that passengers should know about. And our Gene Mackin joins us live with his perspective on the plane crash. Well, there is an additional layer of protection on U.S. carriers requiring two people in the cockpit at all times. At least five airlines in Canada and Europe immediately instituted this requirement and more are expected to follow. In the United States, this could not happen, and it hasn't happened. Greg Slow Rafe, the CEO of Private Jet Services, Services, based on New so Hampshire's seacoast, says U.S. airlines require at least two people in the cockpit at all times. The FAA, when they put in place the Armored Cockpit Door Program in 2002, coming out of 9-11, also came up with a rule that says that there must be two known crew members on the flight deck at any given time. He says a locked out pilot can attempt to open the door using a code known only to the crew. The remaining pilot in the cockpit can override that, and that seems to be what happened here as we learned today. There was no way for that pilot to get back in there. There is no way for that pilot to get back in there. Those Kevlar reinforced doors are designed to withstand weapons fire, a grenade, uh, any sort of impact. While airlines will re examine how to secure the cockpit door, they could also reconsider how to gauge the mental stability of pilots. The FAA says doctors are supposed to ask pilots, and pilots are required to disclose mental health issues during checkups. But some say in a high stress job, that may not be enough. I'd like to tell you that we should immediately require all pilots to undergo regular mental health exams. I don't know that that's really going to get passed. And tonight, some aviation experts say two crew members in the cockpit at all times isn't enough. Some are now calling for three. Live in the studio, Gene Mackin, WMUR News 9.